Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. Um, starting off, thank you all for your well wishes. I am starting to feel better. Um, <coughs> this, the steroids have kicked in, the pain medicines kicked in. I, uh, you know, fevers under control. Don't worry, I'm all, I'm good. Today we have several topics to cover. They're short, they're sweet. Hopefully this won't be another 14 minute video like last time, but let's, let's just jump right in and see where we end up, shall we? So to start with this morning, we know that Omid has re-released Finding Freedom with the extra stuff in the back, you know, trying to make more money. And he posted online that he didn't add new chapters. That's wrong. And he said he added an epilogue, and an epilogue does not mean new chapters. According to Wikipedia, actually, it does. It's the final chapter. And since he added it, he did add new chapters. Boy, he, he doesn't like it when people point out that he's... I, I'm sorry, is he not a royal reporter? Is he not some sort of a specialist? That he's, does he not understand that he added a chapter? Okay, whatever. So in the new Finding Freedom book, which I would be shocked if anybody repurchased the book for an extra chapter, they talk about the Philip heartbreak, the death of Philip. So this is what I think. I think that he's trying to fix their image because let's face it, we all know what happened, don't we? They went on Oprah and gave that interview while Philip was in hospital, dying. They said that they were using Prince Philip's health as a way to keep her muzzled. They said all these horrible things. And then after Philip died, they used his death as a PR exercise, talking about their wreath. No other family members did that, did they? They talked about her special card on the wreath that she wrote with her calligraphy. Do you guys remember all that? They, they merged the wreath. They, they talked about who made the wreath because they were the same ones who did Megan's wedding or baby shower. Everybody was absolutely horrified. So it's obvious to me that once again, Megan had her hand in to the writing of these chapters and this is her way of getting her story out again. Now for me, I wonder who would want to shell out the money to buy that book again just to hear Megan's side of what happened with Philip because we all know what happened. They're also supposedly touching on the Oprah interview, but really, who cares? Next story we're going to cover is, quite frankly, Oprah Winfrey is apparently very upset because the memoir Harry's putting out is being called his first definitive account of royal life. And that's something she thought that she got the scoop on. At the same time, the publishers thought that they were the first one to hear all of these secrets from Prince Harry. Now, the interesting part about this is that Harry had a book come out in 2018 called Harry's Conversation with a Prince, and this was supposed to be his definitive account, you know, of his life and his work. And according to Taz, was absolutely right in wondering which part of the truths is going to change since he's married. Now, this leads into two other comments. First of all, did Harry and Meghan deceive the publishers of the tell-all? And does that give them the right to sue them? Because the publisher apparently did the deal right when Harry and Meghan moved to California. It may have just now been announced, but apparently the deal has been in place for some time. Now, if that is true, does that mean that Oprah's interview scooped out and uh, went ahead of the memoir? I mean, if I was the publisher and that was the case, I would be most unhappy. It's being reported that Prince Harry could face legal action if he smears the royal family in his memoir. I have to be honest, I don't believe that the royal family is going to do anything to him. I think the royal family made a mistake of not stripping their titles back in March. Um, they've allowed this to continue on, and I don't think they have any intentions of doing anything. With that being given, 
They may be giving provisions to staff members to respond to claims that might be inaccurate. And if they write anything about any staff members that are inaccurate, the staff has the right to speak up on their own behalf. Uh, that'll be interesting. Okay, everybody, just a few small other topics to touch on. This one, for instance, that Megan was horrified as the royals wouldn't apologize to her. This is the kind of stuff where I think that Megan is absolutely nuts. And I say that because I have never forgotten when Harry said, that the interview with Oprah was done in the most compassionate way possible so that they could come together and there could be healing and, and reconciliation. And yet, and yet, she actually expected the royal family to apologize to her for what they gave her everything and she crapped all over them. I mean, she really is Looney Tunes. Now, this next comment really just caught my attention. How many truth bombs do they have? They had a truth bomb for the Oprah interview. They had a truth bomb for Finding Freedom. They had a truth bomb for the Me You Can't See. They had the truth bomb on the James Corden bus. Just, they keep going, going, going. How much of their truth do we need to know? This next little bit of information where they plan their money-making schemes long before they left the royal fold, somebody was claiming, um, is absolutely true. Let's not forget that they found out that when Harry and Meghan went with baby Archie to vacation with Elton John and his husband, that was when they came up with this uh, Netflix series, Pearl, that they've been working on for several years. That was way before they stepped down. We also know that they dealt with a streaming company before they stepped down that um, went bankrupt, but they were talking with them. So from the minute Megan met and married Harry, she was trying to brand herself. And finally, it was brought to my attention, and it's absolutely true, that Sussex Royal was never shut down. As a matter of fact, it's being used to direct you to their Archibald website. And the Sussex Royal Instagram account is still up and available and running and is being updated. People are monitoring it. Did the Queen not tell them to shut it down? So, no, everything's still up and running. Finally, I had several people ask me to do some before and afters of Harry since he met Meghan. And I had told you guys before that another young lady, Pilot Hardy, had done one of those. But I decided to put together a little compilation. You'll see before, then after before then after you know that kind of thing so you watch this tell me what you think and by the way that last video is at the end of the oprah interview where megan is laughing her ass off and look at harry's face watch this
And now, ladies and gentlemen, the best part of the day, it's fin update time. He has not left my side the whole time I've been sick at all. But uh, so I was looking through my videos to find one of him and I found one where he's starting to get a little bit braver as far as going past the cat, you know, to get up the stairs. And this is what I found. I hope you enjoy it. It's just cats. You can make it. Ooh. Ooh. What happened? Shh. Come on. Come on. So, what do you guys think of Omid re-releasing his book with another chapter attempting to explain Harry and Meghan's behavior towards Philip and, and try to fix their image after Philip's death. Wow, there's just so much information. Just look through it and uh, make sure to leave your comments below letting me know. You know I love to read your comments. Don't forget you can email me. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future content. And don't forget about that coffee fund. And as always, you guys, have a great day.